this new episode of Continuum Gaming, this time around in English, as you may already have noticed. And today we are going to have a look at three different games again, which will be FW Score, Interactive Horror Stories, and The Legacy Tree of Might. My name is Gerald, and as always, I've got a couple of different things with me, which will be, for instance, this art mouse. It's just this arc form which has given it its name. Um, then we have the photo keyboard holding and um, in the end there could be the uh, Xbox One as well as controller which is this one but it's not going to be in this episode because there is no game in this episode that is really supporting it in a good way so we are not going to use it and um, yeah as the main calculation device or whatever you want to call that um, it's a Lumia 950XL which is this um, my smartphone with Windows 10 Mobile on it and it has a USB-C connector at the bottom here and this one is connected to the, uh, to the smartphone as you can see and of course to the display dock which is standing at the side here. The display dock itself is connected to the TV by HDMI in this case and like this we can bring more or less this desktop-like experience to the TV without having any kind of computer or something attached other than the smartphone. And uh, if you want to know more about all this, please have a look at the corner up there. There are a couple of different other stories and videos which are going to help you to understand what's going on here. Yeah, and then I would say let's start with the first game, which is FW Score. For that, I'm going to go to my All Apps list here. And here it is FW Score. I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, it's all about more or less bringing any kind of ball, and there are a couple of different ones, um, into this goal there, and uh, you have to do that in a certain pretty pretty hefty time more or less. So I will show you what's going on there. Um, the difficulty about it is that there is going to be some kind of an indicator where the ball is going to fly, and that one cannot be changed by you on the fly, but you have to more or less wait that it's the right one, but that's a little bit hard because uh, there are going to be a ball after ball after ball and they're going to more or less move around or move along and the problem is you really have to put everything into the goal otherwise you're going to lose. Okay, so I'm going to turn around because this game is pretty fast paced and you really have to use something like the mouse or a touch uh, screen or whatever to play this, so I'm going to turn around and, uh, and uh, just play it with you. It's not easy, just to let you know. And um, yeah, here you can have a look at play, of course, and we can have a look at the options. So let's see what's going on here. So you can, for instance, buy different items here, um, like this soccer balls and yeah, other stuff like bombs and some kind of atom clusters and stuff like that. And um, in the end, this is only going to be the ball you're going to see, so it's not that important which one you're using. Um, so this uh, soccer ball is fine at the start. And um, there is a little bit of a funny thing in this game. So if you want to go back, you have to use the Windows menu, this one. Or you have to always scroll down to the bottom of the list to go back. Um, I find that a little bit annoying sometimes, but whatever. Um, other than that, you can of course um, earn credits, enter a code for instance to, to um, yeah, like a coupon or something. So you can for instance get some power-ups and stuff like that, but in the end we're not going to mess with that too much and we're going to go to play here. Okay, so let's see what this um, you can use the instructions first if you want to. It's a long list of different informations about how to play this game. Um, or we are just going to go to the level select and I would uh, suggest I'm just going to show you what's going on here. Um, as mentioned before, it's pretty hard already, so don't try to go with hard or something at the start. It's really not going to happen. And um, I'm going to go soccer and easy. Here is this loading bar more or less, so let's load this to the full or to 100% in this case. And um, yeah, as mentioned before, there are going to be different kind of balls, or one ball, but a lot of them, um, next to each other, and they are going to go and 
go on like this as you can see. And there is this indicator. We can already and now we are screwed. Uh, you can already see with this kind of error you are seeing there. So as you can see here is this kind of error and this is indicating where the ball is going to fly through. And you have to put every ball into the net there. And the problem about it is it's close to unbearable or undoable because you really have to be very fast with it. Um, so in the end it's not going to be that you are pushing only the last ball or something but you have to have a look at the indicator and try to get the right position or the right ball for the right uh, shot you are going to do there. And in the end you are going to go with a high score then, so high scoring um, is this. Um, the biggest problem about the game is that you can miss for a couple of times, that's fine, but you have to shoot every ball. So if you are going to lose one of the balls or missing one of the balls entirely, then it's not going to work and you are going to be out with the first ball that is left. Uh, out and this other thing is, as you can see, we missed five of the shots there, and with that you are going to lose two. Okay, um, so I'm just trying it again. I think it was already a pretty good run. And we are lost. Yeah, um, but in the end this is what the game is all about, so try it out um, if you like some kind of a football game like this, and it's a very very fast game. Let's try it one, uh, one more time, whatever. Come on! Bad one, really bad one. Okay, whatever. Um, as you can see, this is more or less a game, so it's a, some kind of a 3D game, um, a very small one. You can play it whenever you want, and there's not going to be anything that you're missing from the outside world because it's very, very fast paced, and you really can't play too long, in general at least, or you are very good, who knows. But in the end, um, as you can see, it's all about this indicator there, where the shot is going to be. And uh, of course, where the ball you are trying to hit is at that place there. And as mentioned before, if you are very fast with sinking and going through the different parts here, you may be able to, to shoot at different directions and stuff like that. It might be that this is much more easy, or much easier. Um, for instance, if you, are, if you are playing it with a touch screen or something. But with the mouse, it's pretty hard to do a very high, high score, I think. Okay, so um, just try it out if you want to, and I would say let's go to the next game. The next game is more or less an interactive story you're going to, uh, to follow, or better to say a couple of them. And um, it's pretty fun, if you like, for instance, horror stories and stuff like that, because you're going to have some kind of an influence on the story, and um, you're going to just do different kind of steps in different kind of directions, more or less. And um, in the end, of course, it's a horror story, so you're not going to uh, come out alive or something. But um, in the end, it's a pretty nice game if you like, for instance, story driven parts. Um, interesting about it is that it's not very graphical or something. It's a lot of, of written text um, with some kind of a nice background or something. I'm going to show you what's going on there now. Um, it's called there and into there we go interactive horror stories I'm going to click on that and uh, in the end it's going to be some kind of an a little bit like a text a text adventure or something so you can choose between English and Turkey I think or Turkish and um, so we are going to go with English in this case of course and as you can see um, you can now select from a couple of different storylines you want to achieve here or go with. Um, I'm going to go to the doll in this case. And as you can see there's always this nice little background image for instance and uh, it's even 3D. So um, I'm not really sure what this game is all about because why would you put a 3D uh, image in the back but you're not going to use the 3D scene you are using here. But whatever. Um, you are a single mother, your daughter Lisa is an intelligent girl who does not have any kind of friends. You buy her a 
correct doll soon Lisa will claim that the doll can talk and this is just the beginning for, of your nightmare. Okay, so um, as you can see you are going to read a couple of different sentences and, and paragraphs here and yeah, then you are just going to go to play and as you can see it's the doll and here it starts. As a single mother you know how hard it is to look after a 13 year old girl hard but still joyful her presence gives you all the strengths you need and I'm, I think I'm going to turn around it's easier for me um, her name is Lisa she is a shy girl she doesn't talk much you got this divorced um, three years ago because he cheated on you with his secretary Lisa misses her father but you don't allow her to see him she adores her father but you think he is an asshole okay click to continue and um, Lisa is a special kind of kid. Her teacher once said that she is too intelligent for a girl of her age, um, but you already knew it. Her reactions are unexpectedly major. She is also hardworking. You expect perfection from her. Her teacher told you that you must take Lisa to a psychiatric. And uh, you will do it soon. She is a lonely girl, maybe because she doesn't talk much. It thinks that she needs friends. So you bought her a rat doll. Okay. And um, so it's going to go on and on and on. And um, you are just going to have to go through different kind of, of storytelling parts around that. And um, yeah, it's all about this, uh, this uh, storyline. And as you can see, how are, you can now interact with the child more or less, so it's a, like a text, a text adventure or something. Um, so um, in the end it's Friday, not a sunny day, the sky is covered uh, with grey clouds, you are driving your car, Lisa sits on the next seat, the seat belts are worn tight, she looks from the window blankly without any kind of expression on her face. You remember that the math exams results were going to be announced today and so you are going to do something. Which in this case is, first one, how are the exam results, so ask her, um, were you able to make any friends today, I bought you a red doll today. And you can just go on driving and just ignore her. Um, so let's go with, let's say the exam results or something, um, Lisa sighs and says, ah, terrible, I'm the seventh in class, not first like the previous exam, I know you will be mad at me, I didn't study enough. Okay, and so you really have to think about how to react to her now because it's going to to interact or more or less influence everything that is going to be after that. So it's a pretty interesting way to to um, more or less tell a story, and I don't want to to show you everything. It's a horror story, so we are going to have a couple of different horror moments in this. And um, yeah, as you can see. Both characters have a little thing going on there and it's a little bit, mm, I think, not the healthiest relationship between them, but whatever. And uh, in the end you just have to, uh, to do some kind of decisions and you're going to uh, get a story told. And um, yeah, as mentioned before, there is not really winning this because uh, everything has to be a horror story here, so um, somebody has to more or less suffer or do something. And um, that's going to happen here. And uh, in the end, the red doll is some kind of a cursed one or something, I'm not sure. And you are going to, to witness that and see what's going on. It's a longer story, so it's not going to end here uh, with, I don't know, three or five screens or something. So just follow along. It's really, really fun to, uh, if you like this kind of, of interactive gaming, interactive um, storytelling or whatever you want to uh, call that. And uh, I think it's a pretty nice game and just try it out if you like some kind of horror stories and yeah, you just want something that isn't very yeah, speed driven or something. You don't have to have any kind of good reaction times or something in this game. You just click on it and you get what you want there. Okay, so let's have a look at the last game for today. The last game for today is The Legacy Tree of Might. It's one of the, I would say, best um, hide-and-seek games I have ever played um, with a very, very nice storyline and very, very nice characters and animations and stuff like that are pretty good too. So um, let's have a look and see what's going on there. 
So this game is available in different languages, so if you want to play it, for instance, in German or in English or whatever you are, your nationality is, you might want to try that out. Um, I'm going to just activate it now. So the think that's enough. The legacy in German, der Baum der Macht. So the tree of might or the tree of power or something. And um, yeah, so let's see what's going on there. In the end, it's a pretty nice, uh, nice uh, game where you're going to play one of the yeah, a girl. You're a girl who is going to um, do some kind of uh, archaeology work or something. I'm not sure. And um, so let's see what they are going to uh, show us here. Nothing of, of importance. So with you. And here we go. Beautiful animations, if you ask me. And um, at the moment I'm not sure what this is all about, but uh, there is going to be some kind of a crash with the helicopter. And um, so we are going to start with that. I'm going to change the player so we can restart the game from the start, and we are just going to play a couple of different scenes. And um, I'm not going to play the whole, uh, whole game with you because it's a long game. So uh, as, as often with these adventure-like games, it takes a lot of time. If you don't have that, you can of course just come back at every, any time you want. But if you're not willing to put a little bit of time into this, it's not going to be worth it for you. Okay, so I'm going to turn around again. And as mentioned, I'm going to change the player in this case. To another one. So I'm going to create a new one and this one is of course as always with my in-game characters for continuing gaming, Furo G. Going to press on OK and now we are just going to click on play. And uh, as mentioned before it's a very very story during game and an um, adventure game more or less where there are a couple of different uh, in-between scenes and stuff like that. It's really, really nicely done. To change the language, for instance, you have to go to this and then you can um, click on Auto Language. This is automatically uh, activated at the start and just select one of the different languages you see here. There are a couple, so I'm really impressed how many different uh, versions there are. And um, all of them have their own language, so the speech, really. It's a sound that is translated, not even something like like um, just subtitles or something. It's really the sound that is translated. And so, um, switching to English, you're going to have different language there. And now, as you can see, there's a voiceover environment, sound effects and stuff like that that you can manipulate. But let's start with the game. So, click on play. And uh, as it is often with these games you can, for instance, go with different kind of um, yeah difficulty levels. So casual, we are going to play it like that. Um, advanced, hard, and custom. So different kind of features are available there or not. And of course, uh, how hard it is to find stuff and so on is going to give you hints. So some kind of tips or something. Or if it's not going to do that, and we are just going to go with casual, and casual, and. Let's see what this is all about. Today we are glad to present to all our guests the main achievement of our expedition. We managed to discover irrefutable evidence of the existence of the Queen of Wolves cult on the islands of the White Wing Archipelago. I'm pleased to thank the whole team of numerous professionals who participated in this research. Woodwick Charitable Foundation intends to further... That's a pretty big uh, problem that is going to occur here. Right? Interestingly, very, very close to what we have today. Infected with an unknown virus, they slipped into a coma and were put under quarantine. However, 
spreading of the virus has not stopped. The cases of infection have been documented outside the continent. Yeah. As you can see, um, there are uh, really nice animations going on here. So the, the characters are nicely done and they are animated in a very nice way because it's pretty lifelike. And uh, in general, in this game, you see some kind of a yeah, pretty static movement and stuff like that. But they got it right, if you ask me. And uh, so it's a really, really nice game you should have a look at. And um, as you can see, what happened here is We've got more or less some kind of a, of a presentation where they want to show something like the wolf cult they found there, um, which was present in this kind of uh, the world a couple of years or a couple of hundred years ago, I'm not sure. Um, and the problem is that they got some kind of an, of an object out there in this exhibition, and uh, that one contained some kind of a virus which is breaking free, which is of course not possible in the real world in this case, but whatever. And um, yeah, the interesting part about it is that the world has changed a lot since then, because it's more or less a pandemic. We all know about that now. And um, this is of course a much worse one than we had here, but still. Um, the problem about it is that, for instance, this, one, this wolf cult, um, seems to have more or less force set on the world, or something has happened there, and we just have to see what's going on there. Um, so, uh, the girl here, and a boy, a friend of her, I'm not sure uh, what the relationship is there, um, is going to, or are going to fly with a helicopter, and uh, yeah, they're more or less going down with the helicopter, and that's a problem because they are now in some kind of an island part uh, where the wolf cult, uh, or wolf cult, uh, is going to be placed. Um, it's no longer there, more or less, but uh, you are going to have to see what the different, um, the different, um, yeah, mysteries about the wolf cult is going to be, or are going to be. So, you can play now the full tutorial, features only or no tutorial. I'm going to go with features only. You already know such games. Sebastian has been badly hit. I hope I will be able to help him. In the helicopter cabin, there must be the first aid kit. Yeah, so they're just going to give you a couple of different options or a couple of different inf informations here. As you can see, he is called Sebastian. And Sebastian was hit at, the, at this wreck here, at this train, at this... Uh, crash they experienced and uh, you will have to help them. Um, as you can see there is this kind of little shimmering going on which is often used in these games to indicate that something is going on there. And um, as you can see the, the, the mouse pointer is going to change a little if I'm for instance going to this part and we have to help him. I'm just going to click on him to show you what's going on. As you can see, he has some kind of a helmet on, which probably saves his life. But uh, in this case, he was injured anyway, and so we just have to help him. We can't move this, because it's just too heavy, uh, by itself at least. And so we are going to have to do different things here. For instance, we can use a piece of blade, so to get that one, just use it to more or less free him. So this is more or less the inventory of this game, as you already may have noticed here. And um, in the end, we are going to put it away now, like this. And as you can see, we can go to this and have a look at it. He is pretty badly scrapped up there. But that's not really a bigger problem, because we can help him with this kind of medical device helpers. So just get everything out of this box you can. And as you can see, there's, as always, a couple of different options here. For instance, this bandage, we have to unroll it. And now we can put antiseptic on that. So fluid is, is on there. 
And now we can help him a little bit better. Just pull it back into your inventory. And now we are going to go to him and do this for him so it's not going to be infected or something. Um, if you ask me why is this helping him, I'm not really sure, but uh, at least so he get conscious or something again. But it doesn't really matter. First off, we have to get rid of the helmet, okay? And then we can just use this and try to help him here a little bit, so it's at least not going to be infected or something. And after that... Really nicely drawn, if you ask me. I'm okay. I think we've nearly reached the central island, where the military camp is soon. But will somebody come to our rescue? We just have to wait, don't we? I don't think so. The search operation won't be allowed in the quarantine zone, and our radio receiver has crashed. It will take time to find us. We'll have to get out ourselves. I've seen a road through the forest. We need to get to this road. It will probably lead us somewhere. Yeah, it might. Um, yeah, and as you already have seen here, it's really, really a nice looking um, yeah, drawing and everything is, is very... for this kind of games, of course, lifelike. And I really like the, the drawing style here. So use the... or get the knife with you, which is very important for different things here. And now let's have a look at the different options here we can find here. Some locations contain hidden uh, collection objects, as you can see. Um, so just collect them. Sooner or later they are going to give you some kind of bony. There's not, you're not going to need them all or something for, uh, for the test. But as you sometimes don't know which one is a collection object and which one is uh, for the story, just collect everything. And um, yeah, as you can see, we want to go here. But this is not going to happen. Yep. So there was some kind of uh, of uh, trap there, and we have to go over the trap now, um, which is not very easy. But as you can see, the environment is a little bit harmful like this. I'm not sure why they're trying to hide this way from us, but whatever. And um, yeah, to really go and get that going, just go to the first place here. This is a, uh, this wolf uh, statue. It's going to tell you something about that here is some kind of a wolf um, cult active. Which is not too good for us, but we will see. In the end we are going to try to solve the puzzle, so yes, it is good for us. And um, yeah, next time we are going to have to go to another place here. For instance, go to this part. As you can see, everything is nicely drawn here. I really like it. And um, as you already can see, we have to collect two of those to go on. And uh, one of uh, the other one is more or less hidden here, so some kind of covered by a par different parts. And here is a new um, yes, it's movie. Me. How can I help you? My name is Deborah Whitwick. My foundation is funding research in the field of archaeology. Oh, Miss Whitwick, it's a great honor for me to meet you in person. As you know. The deadly epidemic situation all started with our exhibition grand opening. Together with the military, physicians, and other professionals, we are organizing an emergency expedition to re-explore the archipelago. During our previous studies, we have repeatedly encountered a mention of an unusual fatal disease, but did not pay importance to it. Now our task is to find a cure for it. Unfortunately, our linguist can't join the group. You have great references, and I would like to offer you the job. It's a very unexpected proposal. Do I have time to think it over? Lives of thousands of people are at stake. We need your decision right now. Well, then of course, I agree. Okay, brave little girl there. Here's the and... But it seems that we won't be able to make it down here. We need to find another way. Yeah. Okay, so first off, let's get this out of there. So we have a knife and we can use that to try to make this at least more accessible. So we are going to get this and as you can see we now have everything together, both of those, and we can go back and see what's going on with this trap. So just put those 
boards more or less over there. And now we can cross this and go to that part too. Um, but first let's have a look at what's going on hidden. Uh, additional to that, because here are a couple of different things. Um, if you don't know what's going on and needs some kind of help or something, just click on this button here. If you do that, he's going to tell you where to search for different things. At the moment I'm not even sure what I should search here. Is there more to it? Oh, here. There is some kind of a collectible. A girl figure, but this is not a girl collectible we needed uh, later on, so it's good to be uh, to have seen that. And as you can see, there's a shimmering again. We are going to click on that and we find another statue. So just use this too. Um, here's something buried, but, but we can't at the moment get to that. And um, now we have to go to this part, and here is another one of these girl figures. And um, in the end, here's something that you're going to, uh, to uh, find in different locations, which is more or less this round, yeah, whatever, this round um, hole or something, where you have to put stuff in. Um, I'm not sure what it is at the moment. And um, yeah, other than that, there is of course this bird, very, very nice bird, but we can't reach it at the moment, so we will have to come back later on. And I think this is more or less what can be done in this place. So go back. And now let's go to the hidden part. Amazing. I couldn't even imagine that there is a whole historical complex here. It's incredible how well it is preserved. Yeah, it really is incredible. And um, as you can see here, are really, really nice video on stuff. And you will have to have a look at this stuff. statue of the Queen of Wolves. Yep. Okay, um, we can pick this ball, this stone ball, and we will need that later on. So put that into the inventory. I'm going to turn around again. And, um, yeah. So, what is going on here? So let's go to one of the doors here. The problem is we can't access that because there is some kind of, an, of uh, jubilee or something um, missing in this case. So let's go to this one, and the same is happening here. As you can see, there is this kind of yeah, of uh, of tooth, more or less, that is missing from the top. So we need to find something to put that in. And um, here is something where you need to put in some kind of a of a jewelry tube. So it's all about those different different very expensive stones, more or less, in this case. And um, then there is this part, and this part can already be solved because we found the stone ball, so put that in. And I'm just going to show you what this kind of mini games are going to be like. And as you can see, there are these kind of figures we have to find. Um, we only got three of the four we need for this to be able to use. But the good thing is, here is this one stone we are going to need to open up one of the parts there. So I'm going to go to this part and I'm going to put this in. And now this door-like part is going to open, which is helpful, because one of the figures is there. Our people suffered a terrible misfortune. Our brothers and sisters were dying of an unknown in illness, but in her great wisdom from behind the gates of the world located in the Dragon Place, our good queen brought us a heart of the tree of might. It wonder, its wonderful properties helped us to get rid of the pain and suffering and cured the disease from our children's body. Hail to the queen of wolves for your good, uh, good, uh, goodness and your wisdom and for your salvation. Yeah, and um, as you can see, so the, the queen of wolves had some kind of an, of an, yeah, vaccine or something, I'm not sure, or medicine to help us out with this, uh, Bad disease, and maybe. During the first expedition, we found several references to the heart of the Tree of Might, which was called sacred by the priests of the Queen of Wolves' cult. They believed in its ability to cure diseases. Are you suggesting that they have already faced such a virus and managed to cope with it? We haven't addressed this issue that thoroughly. It wasn't our main task. But now this information can be very useful. 
Presumably the heart itself, or the way it can be found, is on the island of the White Wing, in the same place from where we brought the virus. The main military camp is already set there. Well, I should get ready as soon as possible. Great. Once you're ready, my pilot Sebastian will take you to the island. Yeah, and as you already have seen here, or already... Look, it says here that the Queen brought the heart of the Tree of Power from behind the gate of the world that is located in the Dragon Palace. Yes, but what does it mean? I think the gate is somewhere on this island, and the military are now searching the wrong place. We must get to camp as soon as possible, and come back here with the main group. The unknown disease spreads very quickly, and we can't allow the number of victims to increase. I agree. We must hurry. Yeah. Um, so as you can already see, it's more like we are going to jump between different time zones here. Sorry for that uh, that chainmail or whatever that is going on there. I can't can't uh, bring the, the neighbor to shut that off, of course. But um, in the end, I hope it's it's not going to be that distracting. Um, as you can see, we got the last figure here. So put that in too, and as you can see we got all the uh, different ones uh, in here and there's nothing more we can get there. So let's go back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is what is happening if you're not going to, uh, to um, load your battery. So I will have to change the battery. Give me one second, I'm going to be back. Yeah, and there we are again and we can go on. Okay, as you can see, this chamber is more or less now empty and we can go to the puzzle more or less, which is going to be here. So put in the missing pieces and as you can see, we can now go to this mini game more or less and try to solve it. So what's going on here? We have to swap the figures so that a magic ball appears in the hands of each of the girls. As you can see, there is this magic ball uh, about which they're going to talk here and now you just have to click on those two you want to exchange more or less like this and sooner or later they are going to give you hopefully at least we need the lower one I think there we go oh no it isn't the right one let's see is it this yeah Okay, as you can see, there is a there is this ball now, and we just have to do that for every of these figures here. So just have a look at the hand position at this place, and try to find something that is more or less matching that in a not too far away manner. Maybe that one, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And now let's see. Now this one seems to be right at this point. I'm not sure. We are going to leave it where it is. Okay, now let's see. Is, is it this one? No. It has to be that one. Okay, so the first line is now in place and we have to go to the second and see what's going on here. And there we go. Um, as you can see, this is now opening. And so we get a new door more or less opened and can go there. Um, I'm not sure how far we are going to play this. Maybe I'm going to uh, go through this door just to show you what's going on behind that, but um, there is not much more we are going to experience here. Um, in the end, here is some kind of guy. I'm not sure what he's doing here, but we can talk to him already. Interesting thing is there were these birds which stole something from him. So we can go back to the first screen or the screen where we found the second board and stuff like that. 
and uh, try to get something from the birds there. Yeah? And I think he's a little bit grumpy, I think, because it was only some kind of a an, of an marker. I don't know why he is that upset, but whatever. As you can see, this is a new, new place now and we can go on and on and play the game through. Um, I'm not going to do that with you here because um, in the end you should try it yourself and I don't want to spoil everything for you. So, um, in the end, this is the game. I think it's a pretty nice one, especially if you like this kind of adventure game. So have a look at it and try it out. Okay, and um, yeah, other than that, I think we are through with this episode. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. This is, of course, as you may already have noticed, um, one of the, the episodes, uh, one of the tenth episode. And um, so we are going to have some kind of special episode in this, uh, this uh, accompanying this episode too. So stay tuned for that. I'm not sure when it's going to be up, but I think it might be this weekend too, or maybe on Monday or something. I'm not sure. And um, so just look out for that. We will see us there or in the next episode next week. And so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We uh, have a great night, have a great day, whatever it's time it is for you. And other than that, thank you for watching. Um, put commentaries in if you have any kind of questions, of course. And of course, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And there is, of course, the subscription button down below. So don't miss out about any other videos I'm going to post. And then, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. See you and bye-bye.